On today's Winning Cures Everything, we got Week 9 picks against the spread. That's right, my prediction on 20 games. Starting Friday night, going all the way through late Saturday night. Ain't no time to waste. Let's do this. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in Winning Cures Everything. It is the Thursday, October 26th edition of the show. That's right. It's the Week 9 Picks show. We got 20 games that we're going to discuss. Before we do any of that, let me go on and tell you, if you haven't already... Go back, watch the BetUS College Football Show. The games that I don't hit here, I hit over there. So go ahead and check those out. There might be a few more here and there that we didn't get to. But I try and get to as many games as possible. I think think we hit on 40 games this week. So, you know, if there's some others that you want to know about, toss it in the comments. I would certainly appreciate that. But the BetUS College Football Show, every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure and go like that video. Watch what we had to say about those games. Those are all listed in the description. So, the game that you want from there, go ahead and check that bad boy out. Uh, Three Dog Thursday. That's right, 2 p.m. Central Time. It was already on here. I'm recording this uh, as that show was about to go. So, uh, go ahead and knock that bad boy out and, uh, and make sure and watch that. I've got a cough today. It's a little, it's a little rough. So hopefully, hopefully my board muted. Uh, let's see. Buy me a coffee if you want to support the show. Buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. You can see my full season numbers over there for each week, like what the projected score would be based on the full season numbers. I've got those posted over there for the supporters. If you want to know my plays for the week, join me on Telegram at GaryWCE. On your phone browser, you can go to t.me slash GaryWCE and uh, and subscribe over there. Of course, the socials, you guys know, Instagram, TikTok, I'm at GaryWCE. And on Twitter, I'm at Winning Cures for the time being until they finish my appeals, which I've sent like 40. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. There's no time to waste. Uh, season record. Whew. The midweek games are killing me right now. Killing me. Uh, 84 and 85 after last week. Uh, on the pick show from last week, I was 9, 10, and 1. I went 2 and 5 in the midweek last week. So, just uh, not great, but we are we're going to fix this. We're going to get off the schneid. I feel good about these. So, let's get into it. Let's start with game number one here. And it is the Friday night game. And that would be... Charlotte and Florida Atlantic. Charlotte, of course, the home team. They are a four-point dog currently. A total of only 43 on this. Uh, It's 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, excuse me, Central Time, God's Time Zone, on ESPN2. And let's look at these numbers. Full season would have Florida Atlantic favored by only about three. So, uh, you scroll down, you start looking. This Charlotte offense has just been... Putrid. I mean, it's just not good at all. The only thing that they have been good at on offense, just over the full season, has been rushing explosiveness, number 18. It just so happens that Florida Atlantic's defense, really good at stopping explosive runs. You see the uh, the green there. Uh, Florida Atlantic's offense, also not great when you look at the full season numbers. But, hey, now I think would be a good time for us to take a look at the last four weeks. And we'll go on and pull it up here. That way you can see it. Okay. Still not good for Charlotte's offense. However, it's a little bit better than it was, right? I mean, that's just, you know, now they're only number 116 PPA per drive on offense. The FAU offense has significantly improved uh, in that time span. Here's my problem. My problem is that everybody and their mother is betting on FAU, and this number is just kind of sitting around four, four and a half. I mean, it's actually going down. What is going on with that? Charlotte is at home. It is a short week. Uh, I'm, 
I'm curious. This thing is really tight. Charlotte has been improving. They got a win over East Carolina last week. Uh, when you start to break this down, there are there are things that make you think they can stay within about a field goal here. Uh, the five factors rank is a big part of that. The other part is, uh, I mean, these sta- the standard downs PPA. Like I, I feel like FAU is going to be behind the chains. Uh, most of the night, number 84 in standard down success over the last four weeks, while Charlotte's defense is number 13. Uh, they can find ways to slow down FAU's offense. And if they do that, then I, I think that there's ways that they can hang around in this ballgame. So I, I think this could end up being like a 17-14 to 14 game, something a little different than what you know people might expect. Because uh, the, the Charlotte defense is good. So... Yeah, let's let's not waste uh, more time here. I'm going to take Charlotte plus the four on this one. Uh, I feel I feel okay about it. Feel okay. All right, spent longer on that one than uh, than I thought I would. Move to Saturday. Florida State heads to Wake Forest, and whew, this one's a uh, 11 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone game on ABC. Wake Forest, a 20-and-a-half point home dog with a total of 51. Full season numbers. Yikes. This Wake Forest uh, team is just... Ooh. I, I mean, it's just not good. Number 129 PPA per pass. Number 121 PPA per rush. Normally, the offense is what does uh, the, the heavy lifting. But, yeah. I mean, it's just... It's not been good. It's not been good at all. Um, Florida State, overall numbers, I mean, number 19 PPA margin. Wake Forest is number 127. I've got Florida State favored by, uh, you know, four touchdowns here, or a, a slightly over that. It's a score of like, you know, 40 to 11, 39 to 10, something like that. It, that ain't that ain't great. That it ain't great. Um, yeah, at this the big thing is... Wake Forest isn't really good at anything. Florida State's defense really good at stopping the pass overall. So we'll uh, we look at that penalties per game certainly leans uh, Wake Forest's way, but turnover margin certainly goes the other direction because Wake Forest is giving the ball away two point two nine times per game. I mean, just yikes, just yikes. So um, let's look at the the last four numbers, and that that might get us a little a little closer here. All right, over the last four weeks, it would have Florida State favored by 22.78. The offense has improved slightly up to number 128 PPA per drive, but it's still not good. I mean, it's still not good at all. So, um, first half point margin, like Florida State might be able to get a huge lead. This might be a a first half bet kind of game. After that, both teams make really good adjustments. So, something to pay attention to there. Uh... The thing that Florida State is best at is throwing the ball. That's what Wake Forest is worst at on defense. So, yeah, I am uh, I am fairly convinced that Florida State is going to run this thing up here. Uh, just a guess for me. I mean, net points per drive is just wild. Number 11 to number 73. I think they're going to run the uh, score up. It's less than three touchdowns. I will take... Florida State minus the 20 and a half on that one. We move along to the Big Ten. To the Big Ten. Indiana is headed to Penn State. The Nittany Lions are a 32-point home favorite, total of 46. There are so many systems in place here that just tell you you got to bet Indiana on this because super low total, 32 is the the point, uh, uh, excuse me, the spread. I mean, that is insane. That is just, that's wild. So, it's 11 a.m. Central Time on CBS. And look, we'll pull it up. Full season numbers has got a total of 46.43, so right in line with uh, the total. And, yeah, it's got Penn State by 36 and a half. Indiana's been bad. I mean, they've been just so bad. Uh, Their defense is awful. Number 124 in rushing success rate allowed. I mean, standard downs PPA, 
I, look, Penn State isn't great as far as PPA goes on – or predicted points added, excuse me, on uh, standard downs. But they're number 31 in standard down success. Indiana is number 128. Uh, and this is full season numbers. Uh, you look over at Indiana on offense – they can't move the ball at all. They are so bad at it. I don't think Penn State is going to have much of a hangover here. Uh, these Indiana numbers are terrible. Now, let's move over to the last four weeks. And, yeah, these Penn State numbers, even with the Ohio State game thrown in there, I mean, Indiana's number 131 PPA margin. Penn State is number 11. Uh, if you want something that makes a little more sense, net points per drive. Penn State is number four. Indiana is number 131. Uh, Points per play margin. Penn State number eight. Indiana is number 132. There's nothing that I can look at that would make me want to bet Indiana here. I mean, if if you do, you just got to hold your nose and, and bet because of a system, and I don't buy into that. Indiana is really bad. I am going to roll with Penn State. We We all know... The James Franklin, especially after last week, he's going to want to get his boosters some of that money back. So he's going to do everything in his power to cover this. And uh, and I think they're going to get the offense moving against this uh, bad Indiana defense. Give me Penn State to cover 32. I think that's the best number you can get right now. So make sure and shop around. Do your job. Do your job. Now we move ahead. Another Big Ten game. We had somebody in the BetUS chat uh, or comments say that we didn't like the Big Ten anymore because we didn't pick Big Ten games. It's like, well, I'll cover them over here. I hope that helps. hope that helps. Uh, oh, yes, Big Ten. That's what I was talking about. Maryland heads to Northwestern, and let's see. looks like it's a two-touchdown line at a uh, few places now. Uh, it's still 13.5 in some spot. This, this number has not moved. Uh, it's at 11 a.m. Central Time on the Big Ten Network. And let's take a look. Full season numbers. It's got Maryland by 16.7. Right? Full season numbers. That's, uh, that's I mean, that's nearly 17 points, right? So you're getting close to a couple of different key numbers there. And that Maryland offense based, you know, on the full season looks really good. I mean, really, really good. Uh, fourth down conversions, offensive touchdowns per game is good. Uh, points per scoring opportunity, way better than what Northwestern gives up on defense here. Number 36 to number 115. Uh, turnover margin, like all, all kinds of numbers that skew Maryland's direction. However, you look over the last four weeks. And over the last four weeks, Maryland's defense, a little more suspect, especially against the pass. Uh they're not great on standard downs. I mean, they're they're better than what Northwestern has been, certainly. But they, these teams are not as far apart as, as you would think, right? So, I look at this. Yeah, there's a massive five factors advantage for Maryland. Yes, there's a first and second half point margin advantage. All these. There's a lot of advantages for Maryland. But they are going to Northwestern. And I am of the belief that Northwestern is going to be able to hang within 14 points here. Uh, Maryland, for whatever reason, throws up these kind of games. I know they're coming off a bye. I know all this kind of stuff. I get it. But I'm going to trust this number over the past four weeks. I think Northwestern can hang around in this ballgame. So if I've got a 14 out there, that's what I'm going to take. Northwestern plus the 14 that uh, that's gonna be my play. That's gonna be my play on this one. Northwestern plus fourteen, there, because I don't trust Maryland. I don't. Maybe you do. But that that ain't that ain't me. That ain't me. <laughs> All right, moving ahead. SEC early football, and uh, and we have got a fun one in College Station. 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN, South Carolina heads to Texas A&M. College Station going to be bouncing on this one. And Texas A&M is a 14.5-point home favorite, total of 53.5 here. Uh, Yeah, full season numbers love A&M. Love A&M. The offense against that South Carolina defense. Um, 
the Texas A&M rushing attack has not been great full season, which, I mean, it makes sense when you play Miami and Alabama and Tennessee, right? However, the offense has been moving. I mean, their available yards margin, they're number 12, uh, number 34 in net points per drive. Like, this is not a bad team. They're number 18 in PPA margin. This team's got three losses, and they're still pretty good. It's kind of surprising. Both of them have played ridiculously tough schedules. Uh, South Carolina, number four, and Texas A&M, number 10. Um, yeah, this is this is wild. Uh, the, the things that I hate about Texas A&M, I mean, you can see them right here. Turnover margin, you know, they don't take care of the ball, and they don't generate turnovers. They're number 116 in takeaways per game, number 72 in giveaways per game. Um, they are number 118 in penalties per game. Now, they do get the opponents to uh, commit penalties as well. They're number two in opponent penalties per game uh, at 8.9. So that that helps, I suppose. They even things out. Uh, they make every game dirty. They make every game dirty. Uh, these numbers for South Carolina are just rough. Uh, but let's let's look over the last four weeks. That's That's what we're the most interested in. How are these teams playing recently? And recently, uh, Texas A&M's offense has kind of fallen off a cliff. Number 118 PPA per drive. But I think it's different when you are playing against South Carolina's defense, who is number 126 PPA per drive. So Texas A&M and Max Johnson might be able to get some things moving right here. Just uh, just a thought. Now, when it comes to South Carolina's offense, the thing that terrifies me about them here is their passing explosiveness. They are number 49 in that. And while Texas A&M is number 58 in passing explosiveness, we have seen them absolutely get just demolished through the air against Miami and against Alabama, which who would have thought that Alabama would be one of those teams? Regardless, it, South Carolina doesn't really try to run much. They run it less than 40% of the time over the last four weeks. Uh, but if they do try that, yikes. And regardless whether they try it or not, A&M's defense, number one in standard downs PPA, number four in standard down success rate, South Carolina's number 88 in offensive standard down success, and number 93 in standard down PPA. I mean, it is... Whew. I, I think A&M... Coming off a couple of losses, coming off a bye week, now you get a weak team at home, and Jimbo is feeling pressure. Yeah, I know it's 14 and a half, and I wish it was still at the 14 when we were giving it out, but I try and give you the numbers that are there right now as I'm recording this thing. So, uh, I am going to take Texas A&M minus the 14 and a half on that one. Uh, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I would certainly appreciate any uh, help with that. Uh, we're we're well over 10,000. We we hit our goal of 10,000, but now we got to look for another goal. And I guess we'll set that one at 20. Uh, but, you know, and that's going to take some time. It's going to take some work. But I'm here for it. I'm ready to rock and roll. Hopefully you guys are as well. Moving along, ACC matchup, Clemson taking on NC State in Raleigh in Carter-Finley Stadium. And NC State right now, a 9.5-point dog. So this one moved off the 10 at several books. Uh, 43.5 is the total. It's 1 p.m. Central Time on the CW. And let's pull up the numbers. Full season has got Clemson favored by 11.02. And, I mean, you got to... <laughs> it's it's. Really wild to me uh, what some of these numbers are showing, right? Offensive red zone conversion percentage, Clemson is number 99. Uh, they are they are so bad in, in some of these spots, right? Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, no. That's, uh, that's NC State. They're really bad. Clemson is number 129 in red zone conversion percentage. Their offensive red zone uh, touchdown rate is number 102. They only score 52% of the time when they get into the red zone on offense. Just ridiculous. Uh, regardless, they are they are not great. This Clemson number right here. Points per scoring opportunity. Whenever Clemson gets a first down inside the 40-yard line of an opponent, they only score 3.41 points per drive. 
Yikes. Yikes. They're number 109 PPA per rush on the season. Uh, NC State's defense overall looking pretty good. Pretty good so far. So let's move to the last four weeks, and we would have just about the same thing. The Clemson defense looks a little bit better. Uh, the Clemson offense looks uh, slightly better, if I'm not mistaken. Number 60, yeah. So number 68, uh, PPA per drive on the season, but they're number 60 over the past four weeks. Uh, the defense has improved drastically as well, and yet uh, NC State it basically drew it within like a quarter of a point here. So what are we going to do with this? I am going to trust the Tigers. I will take Clemson, even on the road. Uh, I know that Clemson gives the ball away. All the, I, I just I cannot imagine this. I can't imagine that Clemson would lose two straight road games. They are normally really good on the road. They lost at Miami last week. That was a weird spot. I I trust the numbers here. I think Clemson wins this game by... I think they're probably going to win by two touchdowns. I think they show up here. I feel good about this one. So, I'll let you guys look at these numbers again. Um, yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Wait, I can't believe we're in a position where Clemson could go on the road and lose a fourth ACC game before Halloween. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right. Moving on to the AAC. Memphis heads to North Texas. This one is 2 p.m. Central Time on ESPN+. Plus. North Texas, a seven-and-a-half point home dog. Total of 49 on this one. And let's pull up the numbers. No, not 49, 69. A total of 69. So many points. So many points. Uh, seven and a half point underdog for North Texas. They are at home. Full season stats would have Memphis favored by 11. And it makes sense because in the full season stats, you've got those first two games which are really propping up Memphis's defensive numbers, right? They played Bethune-Cookman and Arkansas State before Arkansas State messed with uh, or, or swapped to Rager as their new quarterback. Man, let me tell you something. It is a drastic difference when you take those two games out of Memphis's numbers, right? And if you want the full season stats, you, you obviously don't want to do that. The Memphis offensive numbers look great, especially against this North Texas defense. But these are not the numbers that we're really looking for. We were looking for the most recent stuff, and that would be this here. When you look over the last four weeks, Memphis is only favored by four and a half. I mean, that kind of tells you all you need to know. And the Memphis defense is number 56 in PPA per drive, right? I mean, that is... This ain't, this ain't great, right? Maybe I'm losing my mind. Uh, North Texas, number 23 in passing explosiveness. Memphis' defense is number 118. That's certainly going to be an issue. Passing down success rate. Memphis' defense, number 120 right there. North Texas is number 30. So, something to pay attention to. On the other side, though, Memphis is going to be able to run the ball whenever they want to. Uh, and I would imagine they're going to run more here because this North Texas defense is actually pretty good against the pass. So, why would you pass it when you got, uh, what's the kid's name, Blake Watson back there? Yeah, that's that's the way that I, uh, I think that both of these teams are going to get their points. So, I would kind of lean to an over. Don't pay attention to this projected total on this version of it. It's jacked. Um, but, what do we have over here? Yeah, let's see. There's something screwy with this. I think you're going to get a myriad of points. So, with that said, give me North Texas. Give me North Texas plus the seven and a half on this one. Uh, I think they're going to be able to score enough points to you know stay within that number. This Memphis defense ain't great, is what it is. So North Texas plus seven and a half there. Next up, next up, Pitt heads to Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a twenty and a half point home favorite. This one's at two thirty p.m. Central Time on. Uh, sorry. Central time, God's time zone. On NBC, let's pull up the full numbers here. Uh, the total on this is 44 and a half. So immediately, I mean, 44 and a half with a total of, or so with a spread of 20 and a half. I mean, what are we doing? 
what are we doing? Uh, I am showing that the uh, projected total should be like 52 on this game, but that's full season stats, right? Yeah, you can't you can't look at that. Can't look at full season stats. Full season, Pitt is number 62 PPA margin. Notre Dame is number 11. Plays per game. Neither team likes to run a lot of plays. All this kind of stuff. Well, let's uh, let's look down here where Pitt is on offense. Their offensive numbers look putrid down here. Notre Dame's defensive numbers uh, look a little bit better, but not you know not great. Certainly, there are, there are some good things that they are doing there, obviously. But regardless, let's look over the last four weeks. And we see Notre Dame favored by nine all of a sudden because Pitt is now number 38 PPA margin. The defense has improved. The offense has actually improved a little bit. Notre Dame is number 118 in offensive success rate over the last four weeks. Now, granted, the competition has been pretty stiff, but... They still can't seem to get a lot done, especially rushing the ball. Number 110 in rushing success rate. Uh, Estime has not really been able to do a whole lot. It's kind of crazy. Like, as bad as USC's offense is, or sorry, USC's defense is, Notre Dame, a couple weeks ago, only put up like 250 yards on those guys. Like, and they didn't have to put up a whole lot, but... It, it felt weird when you go back and, and look at these. Uh, Pitt, I think, going to be able to hang around in this thing? Like, I, I expect them to uh, to stay well within this 20 and a half. Notre Dame, 2 and 5 against the spread in their last seven as a double digit home favorite. And th- those are all under Marcus Freeman. So, Pitt, not really able to run the ball. They can throw it pretty well, uh, especially with this new kid. I, I think that I trust. Pitt to be able to stay within this number. I think Notre Dame wins, but I think Pitt stays within the 20 and a half. So give me, uh, give me the Panthers plus 20 and a half. All right. We got to roll through some of these next ones. Uh, Michigan state heads to Minnesota. Another big 10 battle, Minnesota, a seven point favorite total of 40 and a half. It's two 30 PM central time on the big 10 network. And let's take a look here. I have got, Full season numbers, Minnesota by 6.19. So somewhere around 24 to 18 or, you know, something along those lines. Um, It feels weird, right? Because both of these teams, pretty good on offense. uh, Sorry, pretty good on defense, uh, terrible on offense. Minnesota number 124 PPA per drive. Uh, Michigan State number 130 PPA per drive on offense. Uh, But then Minnesota's defense has not been as good as Michigan State's defense. So, something to uh, pay attention to here. Both of these teams have played Michigan. Both of them got demolished. That game gave us nothing. Gave us nothing. Um, Michigan State, terrible in turnover margin. Terrible in penalties per game. Uh, Both of those are things that Minnesota uh, heavily relies on. They are really good at it. They do not beat themselves. They do not beat themselves. However... We have seen Minnesota get beat by uh, a not great Northwestern team, so that's something to pay attention to. So let's move to the last four weeks. Minnesota by nine is what my number says. Now, Minnesota is at home, but man, they're so bad on offense. Number 126. And, And Michigan State is as well. It's just over the last four weeks, Michigan State is number five in PPA per rush allowed on defense. Uh, Minnesota is running the ball 65.9% of the time over the last four weeks. That's number six in the country. It's basically a service academy. Uh, But they're not explosive, and they're not good at doing it. They're number 92 in rushing success rate, number 113 PPA per rush. Throwing the ball, uh, number 131 PPA per pass. Like, they're number 127 passing. Like, there's the, the way that they could take advantage of Michigan State's defense is by passing the ball. And they can't do that. So, uh, the Minnesota defense has been really good here lately. Uh, number 36 PPA per rush. Well, yeah, Michigan State's offense can't do anything either. Like, this, this seems like uh, two people just beating each other with hammers for or with a, a bag of oranges or something for, 
you know, four quarters. Uh, I know that this thing says nine. Uh, you see the power rating up at the top. It's got Minnesota by uh, about two. I think Michigan State bounces back this week. I think they can keep it within this seven. I will take the Spartans to keep it within the seven. That's uh, that's my play here. Give me the Spartans plus seven on the road at Minnesota. All right, next on the board. And we're staying in the Big Ten. Again, don't ever say that we don't love the Big Ten. Purdue at Nebraska. Nebraska, a two-and-a-half point favorite. Total of 39-and-a-half on this one. And uh, this one is at 2.30 p.m. Central Time, FS1. FS1. Full season numbers. Got Nebraska by 5.98. And you can start to break down some of these things, right? PPA margin, Nebraska number 61, uh, Purdue number 96. And that all has to do with uh, Nebraska's defensive numbers. They are... They're pretty good on defense. Pretty good on defense. Um, Offensive success rate, obviously not good. Purdue's is better, but regardless. uh, Let's uh, let's take a look at what Purdue does on offense over the full season. Number 93 PPA per pass. Uh, Teams like to throw it on Nebraska, but they haven't been good at it. Nebraska's number 42 in the country, PPA per pass allowed. Number 54 in passing success rate allowed. So this Nebraska defense actually better at stopping the pass uh, or better at stop. Well, how about this? They're pretty good at stopping the pass, and their numbers are better on defense than Purdue's are on offense. Even with Graham Harrell and Hudson Card, right? It's rushing the ball that's going to become an issue for Purdue. They're not going to be able to stay ahead of the chains uh, because Nebraska's defense is really good at stopping the run. Turns out. Now these numbers do not matter, right? Because we want to know about the most recent numbers. And the most recent numbers would have Nebraska favored by 2.3. Now, part of that is because their offensive numbers have just completely tanked. Number 110 PPA per drive, but they're number 40 on defense currently. Uh, It's kind of the same thing with Purdue, though. Number 97 PPA per drive on offense, but number 46 on defense. What Purdue does on offense is... They want to be able to throw the ball, right? Like, they're, they've are they been better running it, but they're not, like, generating a bunch of points by running it. So they want to run to maybe set up the pass. I don't think they're going to be able to do that in this game. Uh, it's going to be cold. You know, it's going to be in the, the upper 30s. There's supposed to be rain, potentially snow in this. I think Nebraska is better built. For that, uh, and when you start looking at like five factors and talent and whatnot, I mean it is it heavily skews towards Nebraska. Uh, I think, I mean turnover margin big here, all this kind of stuff. I'm going to trust uh, Nebraska, right? Net explosiveness, they are much better over the last four weeks than Purdue. Uh, this feels like a game where Nebraska gets right. Not gets right. I mean, they've won several in a row here. They, I think this team's good. I think Nebraska's good. And it's less than a field goal. I will take the Cornhuskers to cover the two and a half on that. All right. Right quick, before we move into the next game, let me tell you about Ticket Smarter. There's a lot of massive games, a lot of massive concerts coming up. All of this stuff costs a bunch of money. But if you're wanting to go to a game, Alabama-Auburn, Michigan, Ohio State, whatever. If you are one of these Michigan spies that is looking for tickets to get into these games to record the other team, and no offense, Michigan fans, obviously I'm just having fun, but uh, you can use Ticket Smarter and you can use my promo code WCE10, going to get you 10 bucks off an order of $100 or more, or WCE20 is going to get you $20 off an order of $300 or more. And it's not a one time use thing. You can use it every single time you go in to order tickets. So I would highly recommend it. Go to TicketSmarter.com or use the Ticket Smarter mobile app. Both of them, you can use the promo code anytime that you want to buy tickets. So go ahead, take advantage of that. It's WCE10 or WCE20. Think smarter, and you see it on the screen, Ticket Smarter. All right, moving along. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. And let's move ahead and pick up 
the pace. Ain't no time to be wasting today. Tulane heads over to Houston. They're going to take on the Rice Owls. And Rice is a 10.5-point underdog at home with a total of 53.5. It's 3 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. Full season numbers have got Tulane favored by 4.5 here. Now, why would that be? I think you can see right there, Rice throws the ball over 60% of the time. You see the pass rate. Tulane, their defense gets thrown on. Thrown on. I'm going to get the southern accent out of here eventually. (laughs) You can really hear me. Uh, They get thrown on almost 60% of the time. Rice, number 26 in passing success rate on offense. Tulane, number 117. These are, so this is full season numbers, right? Tulane's offense, they are really, really good. Rice's defense is, eh, okay, well, all right. We'll see. Uh, let's let's do this, though. Let's pull up over the last four weeks. Now, Rice has not been as good passing the ball over the last four weeks. Now, they, they got it going in the right direction against uh, Tulsa last week. But... I mean, Tulane, people have figured out, hey, they can't stop they can't stop me. Number 119 in passing explosiveness allowed. Rice is still number 68, right? They, they've not been as good, but they're still number 36 PPA per pass over the last four weeks. So, something to pay attention to. Uh, and they've actually been running the ball a little bit better, even though they don't run it that often. Uh, this Tulane defense is becoming a problem. Number 110 PPA per drive on defense. Uh, Dad ain't good, right? I mean, this this score is like 21 to 18, 21 to 17, something like that. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Tulane likes to run the ball more than 62% of the time over the past four weeks. However, Rice's defense has defended the rush over 54% of the offensive snaps that they have faced. And they're number 38 in rushing success rate, number 10 in PPA per rush allowed. Like, this is a much more even matchup than than you would think. Tulane is number 25 in points per play margin. Rice is number 23. Like, what, what is happening? This is, uh, this is weird stuff. I think it kind of goes without saying that, uh, that I am going to take the Rice Owls. Look, they bit me with Tulsa. But this team is is actually pretty good. I think they're pretty good. So, give me Rice on that. Now, we head over. Hoo-hoo, we're going out west. We are going out west. Wyoming heads to Boise. That's right, Boise State. And the Broncos are a five-point favorite. Total of 48 and a half. It's 4.30 p.m. Central Time on FS2. So... Let's take a look. Let's pull up the numbers. Full season numbers would have Boise State favored by 6.02 on this. Uh, Let's see, five and a half there. Yeah, interesting. Um, Yeah, Wyoming makes no sense to me. Right, this is a really good team record-wise. They find ways to beat teams that they maybe shouldn't, and... You look at these numbers. I mean, their defensive numbers, full season, this team is number 84 PPA margin, and they could play for the Mountain West title. Northern Illinois, 2021, all over again. All right, so looking at the full, or excuse me, the last four weeks, Boise would be favored by 6.77 on this. Uh, Their offensive numbers have been awesome. Their defensive numbers, not so much so. Uh... But Wyoming's offensive numbers have been great. Like, incredibly efficient over the last four weeks. So, I mean, who who do you trust more? I think that Andy Avalos and the Broncos need this one more than Craig Bowl and the Cowboys. But that don't mean that they're not going to put up a fight. Uh, I, think, I think I'm going to trust my numbers here. I'm going to take Boise State. Minus the five. At home. I uh, think that this is a bounce back. They have, I mean, no way they take their fifth loss before Halloween. 
I wouldn't imagine. And Wyoming just has made no sense. No sense whatsoever. I'll trust Boise State. Minus the five there. Next up, we're going to stay out west. Washington heads to Stanford. Stanford, a 26.5 point underdog with a total of 60.5. It's 6 p.m. Central Time on FS1. And why don't we just pull up some numbers here? Full season numbers would have Washington favored by 34.86. Whew. The Stanford numbers are, are bad, bad, right? They're not good at running the ball on offense. But the defensive numbers, oh, defensive numbers are bad. They just are. Um, points per play margin, Washington is number three. Stanford is number 126. But here's where the handicapping has to come in, right? Washington has got USC on deck. Michael Penix looks banged up. He got beat up in that Oregon game. He did not look good against Arizona State last week. I don't think this is a game, even at home, or no, especially not on the road, excuse me, where they're going to come out and try and do uh, a whole lot, right? There's no reason to run it up here. You're already a top five team. You're playing USC next week. After that, you got some massive games. You better get Penix healthy. If, if you're wanting to compete for a playoff, you better get Penix healthy. So, uh, let's look over the last four weeks, and boom, there it is. So, the number is, what, 26 and a half? Uh, that's the spread, and my number sits at 26.72 over the last four weeks. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that they try to do anything crazy here, and I think Troy Taylor is going to see this as a, an opportunity to get his offense, uh, to you know, get some get some plays in, all this kind of stuff. They're they're going to find a way to put some points up. Uh, Washington is not going to have to put up a ton. I know all the metrics say that Washington should cover this twenty six and a half here, but I'm going to ride with Stanford. Give me the Cardinal plus twenty six and a half at home. Uh, Michael Penix. I mean, if I were them, I'd I might get out to like a twenty one nothing lead and then and. Granted, we saw this happen against Colorado. Uh, but they, they might try and play somebody else at quarterback. They might give Penix a little bit of time because they're going to need him. They are going to need him. Stanford plus 26.5 for me there. Now, Mountain West. Air Force takes on Colorado State. And Air Force favored on the road by 12.5. Now, these two teams are just right down the street from each other. It's a bit of a rivalry game, I think you could say. <laughs> uh, 6 p.m. Central Time on CBS Sports Network. And the full season numbers would have Air Force favored by 13.76 on this one. Uh, this Air Force defense is legit. Uh, they are they are really, really good. Right? Number 18, PP Amper drive allowed on defense. Uh, their offense is just, uh, they are clicking. Every which way that you can click. They are so good. Number one in PPA per pass. Number eight PPA per rush. I, that is, I mean, this team is awesome. This team is awesome. Uh, I don't even know what to what to say about it. But we have seen really awesome Troy Calhoun teams in the past. And this game is sandwiched. Uh, here, let's go ahead and and pull up the uh, the full or sorry, the last four weeks numbers, and you would have Air Force, let's see, that number, would, uh, 12 and a half. Yeah, last four weeks, I would have Air Force by 12.33. So, um, here's why I would go with Colorado State. Last week, Air Force had to play Navy. Air Force wants to win the Commander-in-Chief trophy. They beat Navy. This week, they've got Colorado State, but next week, they get Army. It's a little bit of a look-ahead spot. Uh, Colorado State may be trying to bounce back from uh, potentially, and not potentially, how about this? They, they might be trying to bounce back from uh, a couple of losses that, or at least one loss that they should have had against UNLV. I'm, I'm trying to get my crap straight over here. So they lost to UNLV on a, uh, 
on a fourth quarter field goal last week. But they beat Boise State the week before on a last second Hail Mary pass. So that's what we're okay. So this is a bounce back spot for Colorado State. Yeah, I the last four weeks they're okay. Colorado State's defense is okay against the run. They could slow them down enough. That's the way I'm going to play this. That's the way I'm going to play this. Give me Colorado State plus 12 and a half. Um, standard down success rate, like all that kind of stuff. I, I think that Colorado State can take advantage of Air Force through the air, which is hilarious to, to say. That does sound pretty funny. Uh, but that's the way that I'm going to play this one. Give me, give me Colorado State plus the 12 and a half on that one. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about these, by the way. Uh, we move over to the Sun Belt. And Troy heads to Texas State. Texas State is now, at the time of this recording, Texas State is a six and a half point home dog with a total of 53 and a half. It's at 6 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, in, uh, or sorry, on ESPN Plus. So you will need your streaming service activated for that to happen. All right, uh, let's pull up the numbers. Full season numbers would have Troy favored by 5.38. Now, this thing has gone from Troy minus 4.5 to 5, to 5.5, to 6, to 6, and a half. Excuse me, a little parched. When I'm the only one talking for like an hour, ugh, it gets rough. It gets rough. Um, so, Troy's defense, their numbers are, are starting to look Absolutely fantastic. They didn't look great at the beginning of the season, but looking a lot better now. Um, let's look at the last four weeks, which I'm sure you guys are thrilled at this. Troy favored by two touchdowns over the last four weeks. Now, part of that has to do with the fact that their defense has been awesome. Really awesome. The explosiveness that Texas State had in the first, you know, few weeks, whatever, that has disappeared. Texas State now number 123 in net explosiveness. Troy is number 53. They do not allow explosives. They are number four PPA per pass. They are number 32 PPA per rush. Texas State is a good team, but Troy is a step up in class big time. Big time. I mean, it is, it's wild to look at. Uh, Troy running the ball, number 15 PPA per rush over the last four weeks, number 37 rushing success rate. Uh, they are going to be able to run it all over Texas State. And, and other teams have already been doing that, right? It, Texas State in the last four weeks, 58.51% uh, of their defensive snaps have been against the run. Well, now Troy comes in and they're running it over 60% of the time in the last four weeks. And so... I think Troy is going to do whatever they want to here. I think they are going to be able to... This thing should have certainly been over a touchdown. Uh, and yet, it's still sitting at six and a half. So, give me Troy. Give me the Trojans minus the six and a half on that one. Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Share it out. Tell your friends about it. All that good stuff. I would certainly appreciate that. Don't forget the Bet U.S. College Football Show. Go back and watch those. Uh, we have... We've tried a few things, uh, and we gotta. We I think we gotta fix our algorithm or something over there. <laughs> but uh, but also make sure to subscribe here. Tell your friends about winning cures. Everything I would certainly appreciate that. Uh, and watch Three Dog Thursday. Let's uh, let's get those numbers up on Three Dog Thursday. I know I know you guys. I know you guys. All right, we got five more games, so we got to rush. We got to get into it. Right down the time. SEC football on the SEC network and Vanderbilt heads to Ole Miss. Ole Miss, a 24 and a half point home favorite, total of 63 and a half here. It's uh, 6 30 p.m. Central Time on the SEC network. And let's pull up some numbers here. Ole Miss favored by 24 and a half. Well, the full season would have Ole Miss by 28.75. Uh, that Vanderbilt defense, really bad against the pass. Turns out really bad against the run, too. How about this? They're just they're just bad overall. Full season. Number 132, PPA per drive allowed on defense. Number 118, uh, offense. Ole Miss, really good on offense. Uh, 
Defense could be somewhat suspect, uh, I think you could say, uh, especially against the pass. Number 88 PPA per pass, number 100 passing success rate allowed. Uh, Vanderbilt, number 80 PPA per pass. They're number 92 in passing success rate. So, you know, maybe. I mean, this is obviously concerning when Ole Miss is number four in Havoc created and Vanderbilt's offense is number 127 in Havoc allowed. That's not good. Um, yeah, that's that's just not great. But let's look through the last four weeks. Okay, so Vandy defense still really bad. Uh, but the Ole Miss defense has gotten worse over the last four weeks, so that is something to pay attention to. And Ole Miss does have a bit of a look-ahead spot next week. Uh, they play Texas A&M next week. They play Georgia the week after that. How much do they really care about this Vanderbilt game? And I am here to tell you that I think that they are going to put up points in droves in this spot. And Lane Kiffin understands to uh, that, that they have to cover the spread. And Lane Kiffin basically does some of the same stuff that James Franklin does. He, he knows what the number is. He knows what number he's got to get to. He's going to keep an eye on that stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I think this right here is what you need to look out for. This right here, passing explosiveness allowed for Vanderbilt over the past four weeks is number 130. I mean, that's three from the bottom. And Ole Miss is number 35 in that metric. Like, they can hit explosives. I think they will hit explosives. Um, I don't think that Vanderbilt will. I mean, I I, I expect there to be a lot of points in this game. Uh, The total is 63 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of points. I think Ole Miss is going to cover the 24 and a half. Uh, I think Lane Kiffin knows what... I think he knows what he got to do. I think he knows what he got to do. So, give me Ole Miss to cover 24 and a half there. All right. We go to the ACC. And, hey, if, if we're talking about offense, I mean, why not bring up North Carolina? North Carolina heads to Georgia Tech, down to Atlanta. The, uh, the Yellow Jackets are an 11.5-point home underdog, total of 63.5, 7 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on the ACC Network. Let's pull up the numbers. Full season, North Carolina by 15.6. My power rating has Georgia Tech, or sorry, has North Carolina by 15.27, uh, somewhere around there. So we'll just say 15.3, whatever. Uh, so the fact that this is 11.5 is... Uh, is interesting, right? Because North Carolina lost last week. Georgia Tech hadn't been as good, but maybe maybe Georgia Tech could give them a little bit of fight because Georgia Tech did beat them last year. We all know about that. We saw that. Georgia Tech's offense can pass the ball. We've seen that, right? At number 54 in PPA per drive on offense. Uh, North Carolina, their defense has been a little bit suspect, right? So these are the full season numbers when you start to look at, well, everything, right? Um, Not as big of an advantage in the five factors as you would think, which I found very interesting. Very interesting. But either way, uh, let's, let's switch it over. Over the last four weeks... We are now out to North Carolina as an 18.5-point favorite. Uh, Even though that passing defense has gotten worse, Georgia Tech turns out not as good on offense as they were to start the season. So that's a bit of an issue. Uh, I will go ahead and tell you. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go against my numbers here. I'm going to take Georgia Tech plus the 11.5 because Brent Key as an underdog is pretty good. I mean, these guys are really not bad. I uh, I know that there's all these numbers, but I, I think that that loss for North Carolina was so incredibly deflating. And North Carolina, while they do have Georgia Tech this week, um, I am I'm about to look it up right now. Is this a look ahead spot for? Is this a look ahead spot for North Carolina? No, they've got Campbell next week. Uh, they got Duke after that. That might change my whole thinking here. What are we going to do? Georgia Tech has got 
North Carolina this week, Virginia next week. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with my gut. My gut is Georgia Tech plus eleven and a half here. So give me Brent Key plus eleven and a half. Uh, those numbers. I mean, they love North Carolina. They certainly love North Carolina. Good lord. All right, uh, moving along here. Let's see. Three more. Three more. Let's do it. We move back out to the Pac-12. Washington State heads to Arizona State. And Arizona State is a six-point home dog with a total of 51.5. This one is 7 p.m. Central Time on the Pac-12 Network. And we're pulling up the numbers. Washington State by 6.33 if you look at the full season stats. Uh, Would have this game somewhere around 28.75 to 22.42. Whatever. You know. Let's just call it 28 and a half to 22. That's what it would have this game, roundabout. Um, Washington State has played the tougher strength of schedule per ESPN. I don't know that I necessarily buy that, but regardless. Um, these numbers are, this is not what you want to look at, right? Uh, this Arizona State team is significantly better than the number 116 strength of record. And that's because... They went through some injury issues. They went through all sorts of stuff going on early. And now they have started to play significantly better. So let's go on and pull up full screen. This is the full season numbers. Here are the last four weeks numbers. And they would have Arizona State favored by eight. Over the last four weeks, Washington State is number 113 PPA per drive on offense. Uh, Their defense has not been very good at all. Really? Uh, Not that Arizona State has been great by any stretch of the imagination, but regardless, uh, you look at Washington State on offense, I mean, they have just not been very good. And, And yeah, like the rushing numbers obviously look bad, but they also ran it less than 30% of the time. So... Let's uh let's kind of focus on that a little bit because they've been throwing it like crazy and not having a lot of success. Number 99 PPA per pass. Well, the thing that Washington State wants to do is the thing that Arizona State's defense is set up the best to defend. So that's a bit of an issue. I I look at this and yeah, I I think that I Arizona State might have found something. Like I think I think Arizona State is going to find a win here. Um And I think getting six points is more than fair. So I will take Arizona State plus the six. Again, you guys tell me in the comments before the games, let me know what you think about this. I'm very curious your thoughts on uh, on these games. Uh, We'll move ahead. Arizona State plus six there. All right, two more, two more, and then I'll recap them for you. Um, You guys are going to... You're going to try and fight with me again. I understand. Old Dominion heads to James Madison on Saturday. James Madison is a 20 and a half point uh, favorite at home with a total of 49 here. Uh, Again, low total, massive spread, system play. Uh, 7 p.m. Central Time on ESPNU. And let's pull up the numbers. Full season, my numbers would have James Madison favored by 7.55. Neither team has played like a super strong strength of schedule. I mean, James Madison's numbers are so, so confusing. Because they're, they're not great at anything on offense. Um, They're number 74 PPA per drive on offense. The defense is unreal. Number 15 on defense. Uh, They're set up basically the same way that Old Dominion is. Old Dominion is just a little bit worse than they are. Number 109, PPA per drive on offense. Number 33, PPA per drive on defense. This Old Dominion defense is pretty good. Like, they're good against the run. Number 5, PPA per rush allowed. They're number 1 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Like, this team, look at the difference here. Number 2 in net explosiveness and James Madison is number 129. Like, that's that's normally right up my alley, right? Uh, and you see this. 
as good as James Madison's rushing defense is, they are number 115 in rushing uh, rushing explosiveness allowed. Uh, but again, these are full season numbers. So let's uh, let's pull up. Let's look over the last four weeks. Okay, James Madison been blowing teams out. Oh, imagine it's not that different. It's not that different. Net explosiveness still number two over the last four weeks for uh, Old Dominion. It's number eighty three. For James Madison now, they're number 128 in defensive explosiveness allowed. I think, they, I mean, look at this. Number 132 in rushing explosiveness allowed against Old Dominion number one. That's something to pay attention to. Big time. Um, Old Dominion, you know, points per scoring opportunity, they're not great. But when you're hitting explosives, you know, you're able to kind of stay in these games. I think... I think team like there are there's 21s out there by the way, but I, I'm giving it out at 20 and a half because I think that's fair. That's where you can get it at most of the books. Uh, but there are a couple where this thing has gotten up to 21. I would expect on Saturday for this thing to get back up to 21, maybe even higher than that, because everybody is riding this James Madison train. And yes, they have been beating teams to death. Yes, they are fantastic. I get all that, but the numbers are the numbers. And I'm going to make the bet. Old Dominion plus 20 and a half here. This thing goes over three touchdowns. Whew. Yes, 100%. Uh, and you see it on the screen, you James Madison people. I'm just betting on numbers and, and situational spots because James Madison has got Georgia State next week. That's a massive game. How many people are, like, fired up to play Old Dominion? You get the point. You get the point. Last game of the day. We're over an hour. And damn it. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. We got, I mean, we're hitting 20 games. Like, what, what do you want me to do? All right. UNLV heads to Fresno State. Fresno, a 7.5 point home favorite. Total of 57.5 here. Uh, it's 9.30 p.m. Central Time on FS1. And... I have been going back and forth on this game. I don't know if Logan Fife is going to be the quarterback or if Mikey Keene is coming back. I, I can't find any really solid, trustworthy information yet. And it's Thursday at like 2. And so that's a bit of an issue. Uh, these numbers... I mean, I, Logan Fife was... He's been fine, but either way. Uh, why was this thing at nine earlier this week? UNLV has been legitimately good. And I know that they're going on the road here a week after a last-minute, you know, fourth-quarter field goal got them a win to secure bowl eligibility for the first time since 2013. So maybe it's a bit of a letdown spot, potentially. But I don't know that I buy that. Uh, UNLV is good. UNLV is really good. So these are uh, the full season numbers here. If you would like to look through these, these are full season numbers. Now let's look over the last four weeks numbers. And over the last four weeks, yeah, UNLV favored by 1.75. So if it is truly a letdown spot for UNLV, which, man, it is hard to handicap emotions, right? I mean, these are 20-year-old kids, whatever. Uh, if it is, in fact, a letdown spot, then yeah, Fresno could run away with this thing, especially if Mikey Keene's back and all that. I just think UNLV has their sights set not only on a bowl, but on possibly winning this conference and... I think they can hang in this game, especially if the line is, or if the spread is is over a touchdown. So, I mean, it's there's something fishy about the number, but I'm going to play right into it. I'll play right into it uh, because over the last four weeks, my numbers would have UNLV favored. That's the way it goes. All right. Uh, UNLV plus seven and a half to wrap that one up. Let's recap them. Let's get through it. Uh, da, 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 write the times down. 
I've got Charlotte plus four on Friday night. I've got Florida State minus 20 and a half at Wake Forest. I've got Penn State minus 30. I put 31 and a half. It's 32 now. Uh, so minus 32 against Indiana. I'll take Northwestern plus 14 against Maryland. Give me Texas A&M to cover 14 and a half at home against South Carolina. Clemson minus nine and a half against NC State. Uh, North Texas plus seven and a half against that weak Memphis defense. Pitt plus 20 and a half against Notre Dame because they can't cover double digit spreads. Uh, Michigan State plus seven against Minnesota because both of these teams are bad. Let's get crazy. Nebraska minus two and a half at home against Purdue because it's going to be cold and Graham Harrell, I don't think, knows what to do in the cold. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> don't Y'all don't kill me, okay? Uh, Rice plus 10 and a half at home against Tulane because, again, Tulane can't cover double-digit spreads because that defense is sus. Uh, Boise minus five at home against Wyoming. Uh, I'll take Stanford plus 26 and a half. Colorado State plus 12 and a half against Air Force. Troy minus six and a half uh, at home. Nope, on the road at Texas State. Ole Miss minus 24 and a half against Vanderbilt because, hey, Lane Kiffin, you might have some losses coming up. You better get what you can in this one. Georgia Tech plus 11 and a half against North Carolina. I think last week was deflating for the Tar Heels. Arizona State has been playing significantly better, plus six at home against Washington State. Uh, Old Dominion. Plus 20 and a half, James Madison back into the top 25. And uh, and I think Old Dominion can stay within three touchdowns. And finally, UNLV plus seven and a half. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can become a member on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Or or you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. If you want to know my plays for the week, my best bets, whatever, as we go into Saturday morning, follow me on Telegram t.me slash Gary WCE or get on the Telegram app and just search for Gary WCE. That's the easiest way to do it. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram at Gary WCE. I am on Twitter at Winning Cures. Subscribe to the show. Watch all the stuff. Go to the Bet US College Football Show for my official gambling picks for this week over there. Um, and I think we're good. I think we're good. With that said, with that said, Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football, and hopefully, hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.